I'm James Morton, I'm a haematologist. I've been in private practice now for the best part of 20 plus years and involved in public practice through the Royal Brisbane Leukaemia and Bone Marrow Transplant Service where I've worked since 1997. I think what's most rewarding about being a haematologist is the interaction that you have with the patient and indeed their family over the journey. So our patients, some of them get cured up front but you follow them for many years or you follow them through multiple lines of therapy through the course of their disease. So you, you interact with them over a long period of time. I'm still looking after patients that I first met in private practice in the 1990s with say a myeloproliferative disease whose condition has evolved into a more accelerated phase and then they've had their bone marrow transplant and 25 years later they're still your patient and you've been with them through that entire journey and they've been with you through that entire journey so they've shared things that you've done and you've shared things that they've done over that time. Chemotherapy are basically drugs that target the mechanisms within a cell or a cancer cell in particular that uh, allow that cell to divide and grow. So we've got old-fashioned chemotherapy that targets cell division but has broad effects and then the newer agents that are more targeted or directed in what they do. So since 2000 we've seen this evolution where we're now seeing small molecule targets and monoclonal antibodies that target specific aspects on the cell surface of it and these are used either on their own or in combination with chemotherapy. So these newer agents work through very different mechanisms. Every drug has side effects. We know with chemotherapy drugs we specifically dose them in order to try and get an effect against the cancer cell without too many effects against other cells. But we have dividing cells in our mouths, we have dividing cells in our gut and they will be sensitive to chemotherapy. So your doctor will produce a regime, they'll dose it according to your height and your weight but then they'll adjust it according to toxicities that you get. So if you drop your blood counts very low they will drop the dose of the drugs accordingly. If you are showing evidence of neuropathy, those drugs will be reined in. It is very common to get side effects during treatment and there can, it's not uncommon to have minor side effects in the long term. But we're very careful with the dosing of drugs and the adjustment of the doses through the treatments to minimise those side effects so that you, the patient isn't left with long term side effects that substantially impact upon how they live. With respect to chemotherapy and blood cancers, there are many factors that we take into consideration as to what we're going to do. The big factor is age and frailty. So if a person is older and quite frail, they may not be able to tolerate some of the treatments that we use for younger people and we may adopt an alternative approach in those patients. Uh, where we think that they've got a disease that can't be cured, then we may be quite gentle with the treatment just to provide them with quality of life for as long as we can. Uh, but in a person who is fit and well, then it's really a function of the disease, the stage and the prognosis. So we'll, we may spend a frustrating amount of time trying to ascertain exactly the diagnosis, but it's very important that we be as precise as we can uh, more and more we're looking at different subgroups of different diseases because that impacts prognosis and impacts treatment choices. And I think more and more what we're going to see in the future is the importance of the genetics of a tumour. So we now have the ability to sequence by DNA different tumours and this can identify specific targets and provide us with much more information about prognosis that can help to guide our treatment recommendations to a patient. When a patient comes for treatment, they'll have an initial discussion with their doctor. They'll go through diagnostic tests to determine the exact nature of the disease. They'll have imaging studies or bone marrows to stage the disease. And they'll have tests to try and assess prognosis. You'll be then talked to about the treatment regime you'll have, the drugs that will be involved, the potential side effects that will occur, and the logistics of how the drug will be given. Often you'll have tests of your heart and your lungs beforehand just to make sure there are no weaknesses in those organs that might be impacted upon the drugs uh, that we choose. So when a patient sees me um, in my office at ICON and we've gone through uh, all the logistics and processes, the next steps are to do a meeting with some of our nursing staff which is an educational session and that's an educational session about the general do's and don'ts of chemotherapy. There's a lot of stuff we don't cover uh, in an everyday meeting. You know, there's what do I do about the bathroom? Uh, what do I do about kissing my children? employment, how's the workplace going to look, how is a person going to function or survive through that period, 
the sex question. All these things are incredibly important because as I said, life goes on and people function normally. Once underway with treatment, you'll then be monitored for side effects. So some regimes actually adjust the doses of the treatment based on how low the counts go. Normally before each treatment, you'll have blood tests done just to see that your blood counts have adequately recovered before the next cycle of treatment. Once you're underway with treatment, um, clearly our nursing staff have a very big role to play. So when you're having your chemotherapy, you'll usually be sitting in a chair and your point of contact is the nurse. And these are very experienced nurses. They pick up stuff that we miss. They pick up often things that are happening at a family level because of the time they spend talking to the patient. And they'll feed back any things that they find or have heard or they think we need to do extra for a patient. As we get near the back end of treatment, we've also got to think of facilitating that recovery. So I'll usually link up with an exercise physiologist or one of the programs around town about rehabbing people after their chemotherapy. Generally, you find that patients, by and large, have a very good idea where they're at. Our role is to be completely open and informative of them so that patient and their family can make informed decisions about how they want to live their life. Now, where a patient has a disease that can't be cured or where they've relapsed and we've lost the ability to cure it, uh, we will always try and give the patients a guide to what they can expect in going forward because it's very important that these patients and the families are able to get the most out of their lives over that time and you don't want to rob them of experiences uh, by chasing uh, futility if you like. So our role as doctors is to be very open, to be honest, to provide them with the best information we can, appreciating that our answers will often be statistically based and not always accurate, and then guide the patient as to how they're going through the treatment, through side effects, how they're responding, and how things are looking and going forward. The Leukaemia Foundation provides amazing support for patients behind the scenes. This is particularly the case for rural and regional patients, but also patients who are having extra challenges or needing extra supports for the journey. And clearly the other really big thing the Leukaemia Foundation does is support research, which is all about these new ways of treating people into the future. So the advancements really have come in different steps. The evolution has been the evolution from chemotherapy to now more targeted agents. And really the exciting thing coming, coming in the future is how we now engage the patient's own immune system to target their, their blood cancer. These are the really exciting areas that we're moving to in the future.